Welcome to Electron Online. In order to understand the photon better, let's now take a look at the oscillating magnetic field and electric field inside the photon. Now let's start with the magnetic field effect of a photon. So imagine a photon is flying through space at the speed of light, V is equal to speed of light, and of course realize that it will have electric field oscillations and magnetic field oscillations which are perpendicular to each other. So in that case, we have electric field that is oscillating like this, magnetic field that's oscillating like this, so that's how a photon moves through space. Now what happens when a photon like that meets up with an electron? Now the effect is, is as if the electron is flying towards the, the this if you imagine for a moment, better to look at it this way, that this is a stationary photon. Of course, photons cannot be stationary. They move through space at the speed of light. But if for a moment, imagine that we change the relative, the, the relative uh, coordinate system so that the uh, coordinate system of the, is moving along with the photon. And then we have an electron that seems to be moving towards the photon at the speed of light. Now, there's going to be an effect between the charged electron and the oscillating magnetic field. So, imagine that the photon is flying in this direction at the speed of light. So, in this case, we're going to say that V is equal to C of the electron. And we use the left-hand rule because the electron is a negative charge. And so, we point our fingers in the direction of the velocity of the electron towards the magnetic field that's oscillating going up and down like this. Oh, no, actually it's going sideways, isn't it? So it's going sideways. So here we have the electron going this way. Imagine that we look at this portion of the photon where the magnetic field is to the left. So that means we point our fingers in the direction of the motion of the electron. We turn our hands so we can now point in the direction of the magnetic field. And we can see then that the force on the, on the electron is downward. So let's write that here. So when the electron is, for example, right here at this point right there, it's experiencing a force downward. Now, what happens when it meets up with the magnetic field that's now in the opposite direction? Again, we use our left hand, point our fingers in the direction of the motion of the electron, the envisioned motion, of course. We turn our hands, point our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, and now our, our thumb points upwards. So we can say that if the electron is here relative to the photon, then the force will be upward. So we can see that the electron will feel a force oscillating up and down as it's passing the electron. So as the photon zips past the electron, the electron will feel a force up and down, then up and down, which will cause the electron to oscillate up and down at the same frequency of the frequency oscillation of the magnetic field in the photon, which is the same as the frequency of the photon period. So that's how a force will be felt. Now, what would be the strength of the force? Well, let's go ahead and figure that out. We know that the force on a charge caused by a, a magnetic field is equal to QVB. So now the question is, well, what is the strength of the magnetic field? Well, assume for a moment that the field is caused by sunlight approaching the Earth, and it meets up an electron. So with sunlight, we know that the intensity of sunlight is equal to 1,361 watts per square meter. And we also know that the intensity, which is equal to the pointing vector, so the intensity is equal to the magnitude of the pointing vector, which is equal to 1 over 2 mu sub naught times the strength of the magnetic field max, the maximum strength, times the maximum strength of the electric field. Now when I say maximum strength, I mean the maximum amplitude of oscillation. Now that's not a physical amplitude, it's simply an intensity amplitude if you want to call it that. We also know that the relationship between the B field and electric field inside a photon can be written that the electric field is equal to the speed of light times the B field. So this can be a vector, this can be the magnitude, and this can also be the maximum amplitude of that, of that B field, the magnetic field, and the electric field. All right, so what we want to do is we want to find the strength of the electric field and the strength of the magnetic field inside this photon, which came from the sun. Let's say that it's a, a photon coming all the way from the sun, so that the sunlight has an intensity of 1361 watts per square meter. All right. So what we need to do then is we need to find the strength of the electric field. So if I now plug in that B is equal to, well, first we'll find the electric field strength, and then we'll find the magnetic field strength. So even though we're talking about the magnetic field effect, oh, and I should put a D here, 
field effect right there. Um, we're going to find the strength of the electric field, and then using this equation, we'll find the strength of the magnetic field. And then in the next video, we'll compare that to the effect of the electric field. All right. So um, this cannot be written as E over C. So the intensity is equal to 1 over 2 C mu sub naught times E max squared. So therefore, E max is equal to the square root of the intensity times 2 times the speed of light times mu sub naught. All right, plug in some numbers. That's equal to 1361, that would be watts per square meters, times 2 times the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and times mu sub naught, which is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. And of course, when we take care of all the units, we'll get volts per meter. And I'm looking for my calculator right here. So we have 1361 times 2 times 3e to the 8 times pi times 4e to the 7 minus equals, they take the square root, and they get 1013. So E max in sunlight is equal to 1013 volts per meter. All right, now finding the B field, notice that the B field strength, B max, is equal to uh, E max divided by C. So we take this quantity, divide by C, so 1013 divided by 3e to the 8, and we get 3.38, 3.38, times 10 to the minus 6, and that would be, the B field, of course, would be in terms of Teslas. So now we established the strength of the electric field, which is equal to this, and the strength of the magnetic field, which is equal to that inside a photon coming from the sun. Now, the force on an electron, as sunlight passes by an electron, which causes electron to feel an oscillating force going up and down, is equal to the charge of the electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to, the, 10 to the minus 19. The effective velocity of the electron relative to the sunlight would be the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8. And then the strength of the B field we found to be 3.38 times 10 to the minus 6. And so that would be the force felt by an electron as a photon rushes by it. Okay, let's see what that's equal to times 3e to the 8 times 1.6 e to the 19 minus, and the force would be equal to 1.62 times 10 to the minus 16 newtons. So 1.62 times 10 to the minus 16 newtons. And so you can see that the electric field oscillations inside uh, a photon, inside electromagnetic radiation, specifically inside a photon, causes a force effect on a charge, in this case an electron, as it rushes past the electron. It has the effect as if the electron is rushing past the light, and you can see that the force will oscillate depending upon the direction of the magnetic field as the photon, uh, as the pho photon rushes past the electron. And so that causes an oscillating force on the electron as the photon rushes by. And that's the, the force. Now, in the next video, we're going to do the same thing, but now we're going to look at the electric field effect on an electron to see what the comparison is between the two, and you'll be very surprised with the results.